Hello, and welcome to this orientation for new Fusion administrators. This will serve as a quick overview for the most important functionality. We're going to go over how to manage individual users, groups of users, assign training, print certificates, and run reports. When you first log in, you will be greeted with a very similar homepage. Just so you know, the Fusion logo will always take you back to the home screen as well as this home button. The dashboard will show you a snapshot of your organization. You'll be able to see how many people have started, how many people have completed, and how many people are in progress. The first thing to understand when adding users or groups of users is that there are a few ways to go about it. You can manually add a user, import users in bulk, or you can have a user self-register using an audience invitation link. We will go over audiences and invitation links later in the video. For now, let's walk through adding a user manually. So the first thing we're gonna do is go over to user management and we're gonna click the users button. Now you're gonna see a list of users that I've already created. Um, and for simplicity's sake, I have provided the role for that user as their last name here. So you can see Bob is a designated instructor in the system. Cam, Courtney, and Stan are all students, and Tyler, me, is the organizational admin. If we want to add a new user to the system, we go up here and we click New User. I'm going to add Kelsey as an instructor. There are a variety of authorities that we can assign. And uh, just for today, we're going to talk about the organizational admin, the instructor, and the student. Those are likely the most important roles that you'll need. Uh, we have more uh, learning materials in the support section where you can figure out the other roles and if they apply to your organization. So let's select instructor for Kelsey. And we have the option to send a welcome email to Kelsey. So let's go ahead and select that. So let's go ahead and return to the user list and add another user. As you can see, Kelsey has been added. So let's go ahead and add another new user. Let's add Sean here and we'll make him a student. And let's send him login information as well. Okay, and then Let's go to our user list again. We can either click this or this. And we'll now see Sean has populated in our user list. So the next step is obviously enrolling Sean in some training. Um, so let's click on Sean's name. And let's go to course enrollments. So let's click the enroll button here. And then we'll see the training that we have at my demo site. So I want to assign him the 10 hour OSHA outreach for general industry. And let's also give him the crane safety training as well. Select courses. We have the option to provide a due date and an end date. I think we'll add a due date. Let's give him a couple months here to do the 10 hour. Let's do the end of February. Let's click Confirm and Enroll. So now when Sean logs in, he'll be able to see the 10-hour OSHA and the crane safety. All right, let's go back to our users and let me show you how to unenroll somebody who has been enrolled in something incorrectly. So if we wanna go back to Sean's account by clicking his name, we can go to course enrollments again. And then let's say we wanna unenroll him in crane safety. You can click details and click delete for the status of the enrollment. Now that enrollment has been removed from Sean's account. So let's go to users again. And I'd like to touch on a few more controls in the user management section. So we can easily toggle users. So let's toggle Sean and maybe Stan, all right. Um, and we can toggle them as disabled in the system by clicking this button here. So 
disabling someone will basically block them from continuing any courses or even logging into the system. You can see the status bar here. So we're looking at only the enabled people, but if we select all or disabled, we will see everybody, including our disabled students. If we want to re-enable them, we just select them and click toggle disable again. And now you can see that they are active. There is a delete users function, but I think that, that this should be used with caution because this will actually remove them from your account completely and they will not be recoverable. This should only be used if somebody was completely created an error and you don't want any of their information stored on your account going forward. You also have the option to send welcome emails from here. So for instance, if all of your students uh, manage to lose their login credentials, you can send them new login credentials and a new welcome email here. So going back to enrollments, there is another method of enrolling students in courses that I actually find a little easier. Um, this is a way to enroll a lot of students all at once. So if we go to configuration, we can go to our courses section and enroll based on the course rather than the individual. So if we click courses and we click on the 10 hour OSHA outreach, we can go to enrollments here and we can see the students that are enrolled in this. So right now we only have Sean that's enrolled, but let's add a couple. So we can look at every individual in our organization and we can go ahead and add Courtney and Stan uh, to this course simultaneously. You could do this for a hundred individuals if you wanted to. So now we have Sean, Stan, and Courtney enrolled in the uh, OSHA 10 hour for general industry. So also in the courses section, if we click on one of these courses, you can see the licensing details. Course licenses are used instead of promo codes in Fusion, but they work very similarly. When a student is enrolled in a course, it takes up one course license. So we have 10 licenses purchased, zero consumed, and 10 licenses remaining. Now, course licenses become consumed when they are started. And because we just enrolled our students in this training, they don't count as consumed yet because they haven't actually started the training. But as soon as they click begin, they'll be marked as consumed. Now, let's talk about the audiences feature. Audiences can be thought of like a virtual classroom and can be used to streamline the enrollment process. You will have the option to add previously created users to an audience manually or provide students with a registration link so that they can add themselves to an audience and the organization simultaneously. Training assigned to an audience will automatically be applied to the user. So we can see that we have an existing audience now that is Bob's audience, but let's create a new one. All right, we'll call this one Kelsey's audience. And because we're designating users as instructors, um, they will appear in the audience section. However, if you don't have any instructors in your organization, um, this area will not be here. Instructors are a good way to basically have a minor admin that can control different groups of users. So by designating an instructor for this audience, you're basically giving Kelsey the ability to manage this audience themselves. Let's go to this new audience and let's go to audience details and you will see um, all the information that I just provided. So the first thing that we should do is we should add training for Kelsey's audience. Let's go to courses and let's add a new course. Let's add the rigging safety and the OSHA 30. We're going to have the enrollment frequency be once. And then we're going to process enrollments. This process enrollments button needs to be clicked to update everything in the audience. So I encourage you to click it as much as possible um, when you're comfortable with the settings that you've made for your audience. Okay, so you can see the last process date has changed now. So let's go to users. And 
we have a couple options here for adding users to an audience. And this is exactly where you can use the invitation link that I mentioned earlier in the video. This invitation link can be distributed manually to your users, and they'll have a couple options when they follow it. So let's input it into the new browser tab. Okay, so if they have an existing login account, so if they were already a user in your company, they can use their existing cred credentials to log in and automatically be enrolled in the, the courses of that audience. Or they have the option to actually create a new account in the system. And once they add their information and click confirm, they will automatically create a user account in your organization and be added to that audience. Alternatively, you can add users individually to your audience by going to your included users down here. So if we wanna add a couple people to this audience, we could go ahead and click add. And then let's add Stan, Courtney, and Cam. Let's click select users. And let's click process enrollments. Now, every user will have every course that is assigned to this audience. So if I go to my current roster, I'll see, let's refresh the page. If I go to my current roster, we will see Cam, Courtney, and Stan. So we can go ahead and check on that if we want by going back to user management. Let's go to CAM. Let's click on course enrollments. And now we can see that he has the 30 hour OSHA assigned, the rigging safety assigned, and the crane safety assigned. Rigging safety is actually in progress because he was enrolled in that course outside of the audience. So it's not going to duplicate the rigging safety and enrollment. Um, so uh, he actually had already started this course. Certificates will apply to many courses in our system, and you'll have the ability to download them in bulk here. You would basically click the start date and the end date for the certificates that you'd like to generate. Um, they will appear at the bottom of the screen where you can download them. Finally, let's go over reports. The new report manager will open in a new tab this offers a variety of different reports for user activity and performance. For instance, the activity detail and participant status are frequently used by our administrators. The activity detail report shows raw data and user action. It shows all activities within a course, including completion status, start date, and completion date. The participant status report shows the student course progress for all active participants. If you were a user of one of our legacy systems, you may have historical reporting data available to you in the historical reporting section. This is a good way to look up completion and assessment data from before the move to Fusion. So this was a broad overview of Fusion. We offer a variety of text and video trainings that go into deeper detail and functionality for the system. You can use our knowledge base articles to better understand what Fusion has to offer by clicking support, knowledge articles, and viewing our articles on managing users, managing and assigning courses, managing audiences, generating reports, and working with the test master functionality, which we have not touched on today. If you run into any issues, you can contact our support team. Please let us know if you have any questions and have a great day.